What's up, everybody? It's Legal Tender. I'm back in the building. I'm back in the vote. And I'm sick. But today is Tuesday. So you already know it's Legal Tender Tuesday. I want to say thank you for the love and thank you for the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you are a fan of newsmatics, if you're a fan of paper currency, if you're just getting into the hobby of newsmatics, stay rocking with me. Stay rocking with the channel. Every Tuesday is Legal Tender Tuesday, regardless of health. And I will be making a new episode every week speaking about something new, different, or interesting within the realm of newsmatics. Questions, comments, and input, put it down in the comments section. I read everything and I respond back as soon as possible. I love the banter that I have via the comments, so keep the comments coming. Throughout this video, if I say something that isn't 100% accurate or it's a little different from what you know, let me know via the comments. I will go back, hit the books, and make sure that I have the right information moving forward. All right, please excuse my deep sighs, but like I say, I'm a little under the weather, but we're going to keep going. But let's welcome, acknowledge, and welcome the newest members of the Legal Tender family. So I would like to welcome and acknowledge Josh Wilder and Flat Earth Austin. Welcome to the family, and thank you for the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so this episode will be a completed set episode. I did a couple of those, and I'm going to keep that going. So, these, please excuse the lighting. Uh, it may get a little bit lighter, depending on the camera. There we go. All right, so, I got, <coughs> excuse me, I got five notes, and this is a Federal Reserve note. As always, you can tell the currency type up top. This is a Federal Reserve note. And Federal Reserve notes are identified with a green treasury seal and green serial numbers. Now, the reason I got these notes in the collection is because of this signature right here. And the thing that makes this note unique is, I'm going to speak about that in a second. But two things that stand out about this note is the signature, like I said, in the Federal Reserve District Seal. So, let's get into it. Oh, let me show you. All right, so we got, like I said, five notes total. We got B for New York. E for Richmond. G for Chicago. We got J for Kansas City. And we have L for we have L for San Francisco. All right, so these notes are known as. Come on, there we go. All right, so these notes are known as bar notes. Now I made a episode. Uh, I made a previous episode speaking about bar notes, but again, this is just a completed set episode. So, all right, let's go. So this here is the man, Joseph Walker Barr. He was an American businessman and a politician. And he was born in the state of Indiana. Who's the state? Now, he served one term in the U.S. House of Representatives for two years. And that is from January 3rd, 1959 until January 3rd, 1961. He was the 59th Secretary of Treasury from December 21st, 1968, up until January 20th, 1969, making that only 28 days. Now, that is the shortest tenure on record, but that is not due to any incompetence on his behalf. When his predecessor, William Henry H. Fowler, the previous Secretary of Treasury, resigned in December 1968. The then President Lyndon B. Johnson appointed Barr to the position for the remainder of his presidential term, of his presidential term, which was obviously only 28 days. Now, the person that succeeded Barr afterwards is this individual right here. Excuse me, I feel like I'm talking weird, but 
<clears throat> I'm going to keep going. All right, so this guy right here is David M. Kennedy. He was the 60th Secretary of Treasury during the Nixon presidential administration. And a little fun fact about this guy right here, he was also the eighth U.S. ambassador to NATO. And I think that's pretty dope. That's a pretty impressive resume. So there you go. Now, like I said, Barr had the shortest tenure for only 28 days. And because of that, his signature only appeared on the one dollar denomination. Seems super dark in here. Now, like I was saying, because of his almost a month, uh, February, he had one month in office. Correction, one month at that position. His signature only appeared on the one dollar denomination for this series right here. As we see his signature right there. And it was only on Federal Reserve notes. Zoom back out a little bit. All right. What else we got? Something else that is interesting about bar notes is that bar notes were only issued from 12. Correction was only issued from five out of the 12 Federal Reserve banks covering only five Federal Reserve districts. And like I stated earlier, the Federal Reserve banks that issued those notes, these bar notes are, <coughs> excuse me, New York. We got Richmond. There we go. Chicago. Kansas City, and we have San Francisco. Now, as we see right here via my visual aid, there's 12 Federal Reserve banks, but only five issued bar notes. Interesting. But then again, is that due to strategic planning? Because with it being issued from New York, it covers the northeast portion of the states. In Richmond, it covers the southeastern portion of the state. Chicago and Kansas City takes care of the Midwest. And San Francisco covers these districts right here, these states that fall within that, that region. So even though bar notes were issued from only five of the 12 Federal Reserve districts, the way they were spaced out, I think it covered the entirety of all 50 states. So that is that. Something else that is interesting about bar notes. And again, all this is due to his short tenure in office. You can only find a bar note. A series year 1963 B. On the $1 denomination. Federal Reserve note of the five Federal Reserve districts that I spoke about earlier. That 12 identifies the, the 12th Federal Reserve District. Zoom in a little bit. Yo, and this is pretty much it right here. One dollar denomination, one of five Federal Reserve districts, that signature, and that series year. That is the only way you will have a bar note if it is of that series year and it is a $1 denomination. So that is that. All right, fun facts. Let's get into some fun facts about bar notes. All right, so the first fun fact is that Kansas City is the only Federal Reserve Bank not to issue star notes. So the 
Bar notes only came from five Federal Reserve banks and four issued bar notes. Kansas City did not issue any star notes. So if you find yourself with a star bar note, one, it sounds cool, and I think that'd be a pretty good find. Fun fact number two, Kansas City issued the fewest bar notes with 44,880,000 in New York issue the most bar notes with 123,040,000 so um one two three four five so if you got these five notes these five notes right here you too can have a completed set now it may cost more than face value to claim these but i don't think it'll be too much more because i always hear that back in the days the public knew that he had a short term in office correction a short term at that position so they just hoarded um, bar notes when they came out. So um, they're not really that rare from what I'm hearing. But um, I did have to do a little hunting to get my hands on the Kansas City note. I got a lot of New York notes, which is obviously, which is obvious because they printed the most with 123 million. And I have a lot of notes from Virginia. But, yo, so that's all we got. Um, please excuse the lighting. Please excuse my voice. And um, I will get healthier and I will light up the vote better. All right, that's all we got for this one. Until next time, keep it legal. Keep it tender. Talk to you soon.